Hey guys, welcome back to this Grandame 3 tutorial series. Before we get too far, if you're enjoying these videos, consider hitting the like button. It goes a long way and helps other LDs find these useful tutorials. And lastly, subscribe and ring the bell to never miss an upload. Today, we're going to look at creating presets. Presets are the foundation of your programming. They store the attribute information for color, position, gobo, and so on. You can find the preset pools by clicking on an open space then under the Presets tab, we have all of the preset types listed. The All Preset type allows you to store multiple attributes as one preset, rather than splitting up the attributes between each preset type. Once you have a view of preset pools, you'll be able to begin storing attribute changes. Let's take a quick look at our stage to see what fixtures we'll be making presets with. We've got 12 spots, 18 beams, 24 pars, and 8 moving washes. Now we'll look at how to manipulate the attributes to create some presets. We'll first select our spot fixtures and change the dimmer attribute to 100 or full. You can click full in the command section or quick command overlay. You can click on the dim sub attribute and type in the value from 0 to 100 that you want. Or you can click on the channel sets in the edit dimmer window and select a predefined value. For those with a console, you can also simply rotate the first encoder wheel. Now that we've changed the dimmer attributes for this fixture, we'll store this as a dimmer preset, label it as full, and clear our selection. Let's create a position preset with the beam fixtures next. To start, I'll click on my beam group and put their dimmer to full using the dimmer preset we just made so I can see them, and then click on the position attribute tab. I want to make a fanned out look so first I'm going to enter negative 40 in the edit tilt window. Since I made the beam group in selection order using the selection grid, which you can find the link to that video in the upper right hand corner and in the description below, I can treat panning the fixtures as three rows of six like we see in the visualizer, rather than spreading the pan from fixture one through fixture 18. To make the fanned out appearance, I'm going to click the pan editor and type in negative 50 through 50. We'll store this as a position preset and label it fan out and clear our selection. No caution needs to be taken about us affecting the dimmer value because the only information that was stored is the information for that preset type that you were storing too. Next, let's create a color preset using the PAR fixtures. These PARs in specific are color mixing and have RGB, AW, and UV color attributes. Let's select our PARs group, click the full dimmer preset, and select the color attribute tab. Since the encoder bar only shows us four sub-attributes at a time, we can click on the RGB one of two button on the left side, and this will take us to the second page of sub-attributes where white and UV are hiding. I want to make a light blue color preset. I'll start by bringing the red to zero and the green to 50. As you can see in the encoder bar, once a color sub-attribute has been modified, the current status of all of the other sub-attributes become recorded. This way, you don't have to enter a value for every single sub-attribute if you don't need to change their values. We'll store this as a color preset, label it light blue, and then clear our selection. Let's make one more light blue color preset using our spot fixtures. Since these fixtures emit color using a color wheel, we are limited to the color options available. I'll click on the spot group, then the full dimmer preset, and then the RGB page button until I get to the color wheel sub attributes. Since this fixture has two color wheels, let's see if we can find a good light blue. In the channel sets, it looks like there's only a dark blue and a cyan color option for the first color wheel, so let's go on to the second color wheel. There's the light blue one that I want, so I'm going to select it. Unlike the color mixing fixtures that automatically record the current status of the other color sub-attributes, these color wheels work independently of each other, and therefore can be stacked on top of each other for additional color combinations. To make sure this doesn't happen with this preset, we can either select the open channel set on the first color wheel to record the sub-attribute, or we can simply double-click the color attribute tab to record all color sub-attribute statuses. This method works for any attribute tab, but more on that in a later video. Let's store this in the same light blue color preset we made before. This time, however, we will be prompted to choose a store mode. In this window, we have quite a few options. 
We can disregard the grid merge mode because attribute information does not specifically store grid information. Next is preset mode, which will be explained in the next video. Along the bottom are the three main storing options. Overwrite deletes all previous information and replaces it with the new information you are about to store. Merge will blend previous information and the new information into one preset. Remove will allow you to delete specific information per your fixture selection without disrupting the attribute information you still have in that preset for other fixtures not part of your selection. I'm going to select Merge and then clear my selection. Now when I choose my spot and par groups, bring my dimmer to full, and then call that preset, both of my fixture types will go to the color preset light blue. Let's clear our selection one last time, and always remember to save your show file.